escorted tonight by his parents Brad and Aaron Rundina Peng. His school activities include track for four years, basketball four years, football three years, golf one year, orchestra four years, and SAD three years. His community activities include volunteering with Care for Kane, he's a Little League umpire, middle school track meet statistician, and volunteer with Special Olympics. Sam's future plans include traveling and learning from mentors and become a trader in the stock market. Mr. Sam Lundin.
1017 XZY, it's Kane High School Basketball. Our broadcast is made possible in part through the financial support of Zook Motors, Kane Lumber and Fuel True Value Hardware, W.E. Swanson Insurance Agency, Field Street Boots, Allegheny Eye Care, Highlander Energy, Rich Gas, Lindbergh Furniture, and Dine Excavating. Now, let's go live courtside for the game on the official station of Wolfpack Nation, 1017 XCY. Hello and welcome to the Wolves Den. It is senior night and it's time for the next edition of Kane Wolves men's varsity basketball between your Kane Wolves and the Cowdersport Falcons. I'm Braden Byam joined by the man to my right, my partner Jim Coppersmith and Kane and for Cowdersport the clock is ticking. Kane coming into this game with a 7-11 record. Cowdersport at 9-9. Both teams needing a win. And what better way to open up the most important, most crucial stretch of your season than against a huge question mark, Jim. Cowdersport, they're 9-9, as we said. So theoretically, you think, oh, Cowdersport is a better team than Kane. But we don't play a lot of common opponents, Jim. We really don't. No, they're, they're, so what are your thoughts going into this game? Cowdersport's schedule has pretty much been a northern tier from the start. They have a few games on the outside. We agree they're nine and nine. Uh, you have the top two teams in the northern tier, uh, Otto Elder and Cameron County. They sit in the same realm with Port Allegheny. Ballpark th three and fourth in the league. Kane is split with Port Allegheny. Countersport has been beaten twice by them. They're, they don't look like a very big team. I think they're a little younger than Kane, but it's hard to, they, they have a lot of seniors, but experience wise, I'm not sure what we have. So I think we're in for a good game. It's, like I said, it's a big game for both of them. Powdersport has a record close to getting into district. Kane needs to fight a little bit to get there. The, the floor is wide open ahead of them, so we're going to see what happens. Absolutely, Jim, and if there's one thing you can count on for this Cowdersport team, it's their ability to get up and down the court, and that's highlighted by none other than Kevin Sherry. And if you guys don't know him, he is a cross-country and track runner. He is quite literally the best runner I've ever seen with my own two eyes. He is a fantastic athlete, and if the rest of the athletes and the rest of the players on the court tonight for Cowdersport have the stamina, anything close to what he does, then we're going to be in store for a very back and forth game. And Jim, going off of what you said about their big men, I think the key to this game is going to be how we play in the post. Obviously, that immediately leads you to Connor Brown, but at the same time, maybe you'll see a little bit more of Sam Lundin going down in the post more than he usually does, using that size advantage over Countersport because they have some fairly tall players. But aside from one, they don't have anybody who can really use their width in order to get to the basket they, and make up a post move. They have one guy looks like a little bit of bulk to him. The rest of them are pretty slender. I know their last game, I can't think who they played, but they had eight threes in the game. So a lot of their, obviously a lot of their games are going from the outside. And I think talking to Coach Dar, his goal tonight is try to work it inside and see what they can do against him at the, on the board. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Yep, absolutely, Jim. And this game is a big question mark. And with that, we will send you back to our studio. We're anticipating a great one tonight here at the Wolves Den. And we're sending it back to the studio at WXEY. Kane Wolves Basketball on 1017 XEY. Supported by our friends of the Wolf Pack and businesses like these. Allegheny Eye Care, providing eye exams and additional coverage for eye and health situations in both of their Kane and Smithport locations. For more information, their phone number is 814-837-7880. Field Street Boots in Kane, a dealer for Carhartt and Timberline Clothing, as well as winter footwear and sporting goods. They're on Facebook under Field Street Boots. Highlander Energy, an industrial contractor specializing in the power, petrochemical, natural gas processing, pulp and paper industries. HighlanderEnergy.com. Kane Lumber and Fuel True Value Hardware. Building supplies, lighting, winter snow and ice removal product to their location on Hemlock Avenue in Kane. Rich Gas of Kane, providing propane gas services, including delivery and installation with automatic refills. Online at richgasinc.com. W.E. Swanson Insurance Agency, offering auto, homeowners, and business insurance at 23 Fraley Street in Kane. W.E. Swanson Agency.com. Zook Motors, with new and pre-owned vehicles and a service and parts department. They're online at zookmotors.net. 
Lindbergh Furniture, Route 219 north of Johnsonburg, and now Lindbergh Sleep Center at 410 Center Street in downtown Johnsonburg. They're a local dealer for brands like Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, and Ashley. More info at LindberghFurniture.biz. Dine Excavating. Their services include gravel and limestone, topsoil, and septic tanks. Located on Route 6 west of Kane, their phone number is 814-837-6990. We thank these sponsors and friends like you for supporting Kane Wolves basketball coverage on 1017XZY. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back at the Wolves Den here in the ice box of Pennsylvania in Kane, Pennsylvania. And we're about 10 seconds away from having to stand up and gladly honor our nation for the playing of our national anthem. So we're going to remove our headsets, stand up, and honor our country. We'll be back momentarily. Thank you. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. We are very glad and thankful to have you with us. And Jim, let's get down to the statistics a little bit. Kane, only three and six at home. You just can't have that if you want to be making a playoff push. But in spite of that, they have a great opportunity in front of them. I think, I think they have a very good opportunity. If they, if they play like they're capable, they can stay with most teams in the area size. Like there's a couple you're out of our class. But majority of the Kane plays hard. You have the senior leadership, Dane and Sam. Like Connor Brown's virtually a new guy coming back. He hasn't played much in high school. He's growing. We wish you had him a couple years ago and to work into this. But I, I look forward to what Kane can do tonight. I really do. Right. And Jim, like you were saying, Connor Brown, it might be his first and only season playing varsity basketball. Yeah. But you really wouldn't know it because he is a fantastic basketball player. He is a very key element to any game this team's playing, especially the game tonight. Let's take a look at the rest of Kane's schedule. So tonight they play Cowdersport. So they have a chance to improve that 3-6 and six record at home. But meanwhile, their fi final home game is potentially the last game of the year against Cranberry Area, a tradition in this school. So going in chronological order, you have the game tonight at Cowdersport. You have next Wednesday away at Brockway. Then next Friday away at Johnsburg. Johnsburg's having a very good season. And then finally, Tuesday, February 13th, a home game against Cranberry. Now Kane made the postseason last year with being one game below 500. And if they can do that again, even with a record like that, that's great. That's not the standard that Coach Dar wants to set in this locker room, though. Do they have it? It's all in front of them right now. They, Absolutely. They hit all four, they got it. they're at that 500 level. They miss one, they still have a good chance of getting in. Possibilities. Let me run over the starting lineups here real quick before we get started. For counter sport, uh, Michael Botson, a senior. Mason Ressner, a junior. Dylan Howard, I'm not sure the class. I do believe it's a junior, but I don't have it on paper. Kevin Sherry, the senior. 
Riley Strike a senior. Starting for the Wolves, Kyle Zucca Jr., Dane Anderson a senior, Sam Landina a senior, Brock Wenzel a junior, Connor Brown a senior. So we'll, I think Coach Wenzel will probably go what, eight, nine deep, I think. I mean, they're all going to play, I think, tonight. They're going to get a good mix. Yeah, absolutely, and you, and you wonder too because, like I said, Jim, this game is a huge question mark. It really could go either, either way, and that's something that we love when we do our job here tonight. But most importantly, we love Kane Wolves basketball, and the ref is going to get it underway. They're ready to tip it off, and it is up, and the toss is won by the Wolves. Wenzel drives into the basket and almost immediately gets it in, but not quite. The rebound's going to go to number 21, Dylan Howard, who gives it to his point guard, number four, Mason Rossner. And there's Kevin Sherry for three. No good. Rebound goes to Connor Brown. Something you're probably going to hear a lot of tonight. And Brock Wenzel calms it down. Finds Dane Anderson who puts it up. And no good. Brown on the rebound. Oh, Not too, able to put it in. Too hard. That's what you're going to see. Connor's going to hit the boards hard. It's Riley Strike with a rebound. And he gives it to, looks like, another ball handler for Cowdersport. Number one, Michael Batson. And up in the post and in is Riley Strike on Connor Brown to score the first bucket of the game to put Cowdersport up two to zero. Seven minutes to play in the first. Dane Anderson trying to facilitate the offense. Give Kane their first points of the game and not leave Cowdersport unmatched. And that's a great way to do it as Sam Lundin draws the shooting foul. He's going to the line. And once again, like we said, size is a factor that's in Riley Kane's strike advantage. Riley with a foul. That's his first, team first. So the size hopefully is going to be an advantage for the Wolves tonight as Lundin sinks the first one. Second one's up and away, uh. and... No doubt about it. Sam Lundin looking to have himself a fantastic senior night, which we all know he can do. We're sure that he'll do just that, along with the rest of the Wolves tonight. As Sherry, oh. that pass is tipped and found by Brown, but it goes into the hands of Howard, who posts up, got draws the gonna, foul. I'm going to guess Zook, but I'm not sure who they called that on. And Howard you know, is going to go to the line. So just like Connor that. Brown, I think. Connor Brown gets his first foul. Just like that, Kane shoots two and makes him. Now Cowdersport has the opportunity to do the same with Howard, and that they're not going to be able to do that. He misses the first. He sinks the second, and you love the student section that's here tonight. Very right. sizable, a lot larger than average. So you can hear him right now saying rebound, box out. Very great to see the community out here tonight and the students as well. We're back to the game. Zook finds Brown in the post. Up on Sherry. No good. Rebound is going to go to Howard. Anderson tries to wrestle it away, but no cigar. And there's Batson for three. Batson oh. no good. Sherry with the rebound. Uses his quick speed, but he's not taller than Connor <laughs> Brown. And Brown's able to knock it out of his hands. The ball rolls out of bounds. It will remain in the possession of Cowdersport. He got caught in the trees in there himself, huh? Passes inbounded to Batson. Batson dribbles to his left. He's guarded by Zook. And Batson just trying to find a pass. He finds Rossner. And Anderson gets to steal. Fast break opportunity for the Wolves. Anderson up. Oh, no, no call. good. He did but get the call. He does get the call. He will head to the line up 3-2 to two with 6.04 the play in the first. That's one thing that Dane Anderson is phenomenal at. If he's not going to make the basket, odds are he probably so drew a foul. He's making contact. And the first one didn't quite hit the mark. Try to make an adjustment for the second. Anderson puts it up, yeah, and long. no good. Tipped away. But Brown able to secure the rebound. Oh. oh, just too high off of Dane Anderson. Zook dives into the crowd, almost able Dane's to get it. Calm that pace down just a little bit. They'll be just fine here. And Zook, he's smiling. You could tell he just, he just went straight into the student section. But you know what? That's okay. We're a big fan of that. And there's Batson. Oh, Batson block, is blocked by Brown. He has a family. <laughs> and Wenzel, uh -oh. oh, he tries to find Zook. Brown. And, but Howard's able to break the pass Brown. away. And Brown off the ricochet. Is everywhere right now. He is. And off the ricochet, it will fall out of bounds on Countersport. So it will be Kane Ball. Zook, the inbounder. 
finds Lundin up on Howard, he got it. Sam Lundin has his first basket of the night when you don't count the free throws. And oh, just a careless pass, it's picked off by Dane oh. Anderson. Oh, and Lazy. look at that. Lazy pass. Strike is able to get it away from the pass that was intended to Zook and converts on the fast break opportunity. And Jim, just like we said, speed is the name of the game for Countersport. They're able to run up and down the court with no problem right now. That was a Van Wy, I think, in that basket. Anderson to his right. Thinks about it, but he won't take the three. Passes it to Lundin. Lundin finds Zook. Zook to Wenzel. Wenzel dribbles into his left end towards the post. No good. Rebound is going to be credited to Howard. That's in. Way finds out. number four. No good. That would have been Mason Rosner. But he can, does not convert the three. And Batson reaches in on Anderson and gets called for the foul. Third team foul on Tyler's partner. And we still have 448 to play in the first quarter. Came up five to four. So three fouls already for Cowdersport could easily work against them, especially if they keep up the aggression that they are. The Kane can get the five fouls in no time. And at that point, any foul is basically a shooting foul because they're going to the line. As Lundin oh. shoots it, the three, no good. Hey, we got a foul. Lundin just came down on top of uh, Dylan Howard. Yep, he's definitely, down, down. definitely didn't mean to do that. Just wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah, Howard, across the nose. Yep, looks like. Got him in the nose, maybe part of the eye as the coaching staff runs onto the court to help him. So hopefully whatever happened to his face is very minimal and we're able to see him again tonight as the crowd gives him he's, he's, a nice they're ovation. They're right to the locker room. Yep, and speaking of the crowd, how about Senior Rec? We'll talk about that more at halftime, but Senior Rec, Kane actually made a very nice gesture to the Countersport seniors. They gave them gifts. We all recognized them and clapped for them, and we did it happily because that's yep. what Kane's all about, yep. Jim. All six of their seniors. And Cherry in the post. No doubt about that one. Kevin Cherry with his first basket of the game to make it a one-point game. Still in favor of the Wolves. Anderson guarded by Sherry. Can he respond? Ooh, yes, he three, can. Big three. Dane Anderson dials up a three. What a response by number two for the Wolves. Might get some points scored tonight the way this is headed out. They're both playing hard. Hey, we love that. Number one. And it's Batson, no good. Out hustles Kane to the rebound. Yeah, but he's able to get his own rebound and Batson Almost stripped away by Brown. He's able to maintain possession. Now he finds number three, Drew Van Wee. No good. Brown on the rebound. There's a break. Zook on the fast break opportunity. Slows it down. Finds Sam Lundin. Lundin with the no-look pass to Anderson. And it's unfortunately no good. Would have been a beautiful play. Still a beautiful pass by Tipped Lundin. Tipped by Cowdy. Kane's ball. And Connor Brown's going to take the inbound pass on this one. And in comes... Preston Dar, Finn, Finn Chamberlain, Chamberlain, and out goes Brock Wenzel and Kyle Zook. The ball handling duo, both are juniors, both have played with each other for a very long time. They're very good basketball players. As play resumes, Anderson chucks one up, no good. Cherry with the rebound. He's moving. Up nice drive. and nice oh, drive. what a drive by Mason Rossiner. On the layup opportunity, just ran right past everybody. Did not hesitate, something you like to see as a basketball fan right there. Preston Dar fakes the pass to Lundin. He finds Chamberlain, guarded by Rossner. Chamberlain, the left-handed nice layup is in. Right into the peach basket is Finn Chamberlain. But Strautner in and out. Nice break for the Wolves. Hopefully we can convert on that gift as Anderson, not willing to slow down the pace of this game. He just keeps moving along, and why the heck not? Let's keep this thing rolling around quickly. Oh, there's a giveaway. And Dar. Is stripped away by oh, Von Wee. Oh. Yep, and Von Wee is able to convert. And now he will go to the line with an opportunity to put this game into a one point game. Dane's first foul, three apiece. And Chris Yates yep. comes in the game. Chris Yates checks in. Brown. Good to see him, him yep. as well. He, yep. As the season has progressed, he's seen a huge increase in playing time for the most part. So very great opportunity that Yates has seen, and he's made the most of it as Cowdersport is able to increase their lead to three. I apologize for the error that I said earlier in the score. So Cowdersport up 12 to nine with a little over two and a half to play. Dar drives in and Looks like Chamberlain was looking to cut to the basket. Too many unforced errors right now. You just got to settle down, settle into it. 
I think they're a quicker team. Yeah, absolutely, Jim. The aggressiveness is on Kane's side right now, but they're just hurrying just a little too much. Yeah, but on that last play, you could tell Chamberlain wanted to cut to yep. the basket, but Dar didn't think he was going to, so it accidentally just flew out of bounds. So Cowdersport, the ball's in Drew Vonwee's hands, into Batson, back to Vonwee. Kevin Sherry calling for the ball. He's saying, no one's on me, no one's on me. Yes, somebody is, Brock Wenzel, oh. but he can think whatever he wants on that one. He is really fast, after all. And Vonwee... Gives it to Rossiner. Rossiner guarded by Chamberlain. Nice Rossiner Blocked by again and and one. Nice move. For Mason Rossiner, the junior. That fouls on Chris Yates, his first. And Rossiner dumped it down to Strike, who immediately passed it right back to him and up for the left-handed layup. It's a give and go, real nice. Cowdersport with a chance to increase their lead to six. In and out. Not quite. Yates, Chris Yates, rebound. yep. Yates on the rebound. Something you like to see. I'm sure we'll hear a lot of that too tonight, just like Connor Brown. And Chamberlain passes it back out to Dar. Dar turns to his left, finds Anderson, guarded by Rossiner. Anderson trying to make a move. And Dar drives into the basket. Oh, oh what a way to use his size. Preston Dar, the freshman, puts it in. Well, Kevin Sherry loses the ball Yates, nice on the fast okay. break. Tipped away by Dane Anderson. Pulled in by Yates. And Anderson with an opportunity to potentially tie up this game. At Wenzel finds Chamberlain. Chamberlain drives in with oh, the swim terrible. move. Not quite, but it would have been fantastic. Great effort by the sophomore. Just not quite. Pushing it. And Striner for three. Oh, three. He that's, splashes that's, that's it. That's Ressner again. Again. Mason Ressner. He's got seven in the quarter. Wow. What a way the, to make your name known in the, in the town of Kane, Pennsylvania. Drain nope, some threes and we'll there. remember you, man. And that's what he's doing right now. As Cottersport is up 17 to 11. It looks like Coach Dar is going to call a timeout. I know I say it a lot. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I'm a big believer in pressing. So I wonder if and when Coach Dar is going to start to apply that press. I think they have to. And, it, and even on the offense, they were trying to force it into, into Connor early. They kind of got away from that. Now I think Cottersport shut those lanes off, those passing lanes off. Kane's got to have to hit a couple outside shots to open that back up. Right, Jim. And what you said earlier, uh, just unforced errors, self-inflicted errors. That is the difference in this game so far, in my opinion. Countersport, they've been excellent on the fast break, and they've been pretty sufficient yep. from three, but Kane just had some costly turnovers so far. If they can minimize those and prevent themselves from beating that's themselves, just, then they should be doing. good the rest of the way as another turnover, and oh, oh no so, good. Wenzel got in the way of that one. Nice play. Van Wee wasn't able to put in the layup, and here comes no, on. No nope. call. It's strike. On the shot, there's Van Wee again, no good. Anderson, big Anderson, rebound. Yep, finally the rebound goes to Kane. Anderson dumps it to Zook. Sure. Zook, oh, nothing but air on that one, unfortunately. But oh. don't worry, Brown gets it. Zook on the rebound again. And oh, Sherry that uses like his speed. I had to call that one a travel myself. But He's Sherry uses his speed there. and gets it. Nobody's home for the Wolves. And, and it's an and one oh for Mason Rossiner. Sam Lundin's second foul. This is not good. Yep, Lundin fouled him just as he was releasing that ball on the layup. Wouldn't have been able to affect the play anyways. Just a little bit too late for Lundin, okay. and it's going to cost that him. That one in. And Cowdersport now up by eight, 19 to 11 with 18 and a half to play. Kane calls in a lot of substitutions. The five in right now are Preston Dar, Chris Yates, Finn Chamberlain. Isaiah Smith and Ben Wilson. And the, the free throw is made to make the lead. 10 points in the nine quarter. Nine points, yep, nine for point lead for Cowdersport. Isaiah Smith finds Chamberlain. Chamberlain for Dar, for three. Dar's no good, Chamberlain gets the rebound. And, they, and, and it's intercepted it by Rossiner. And just like that, at oh the end my. of the first quarter, a very fast first quarter, and Cowdersport is not afraid to show off their speed as they lead the Kane Wolves 20 to 11 at the end of the first. And with that, we will send it back to our studios at WXUI. Oh, excuse me, we will not do that. This is the first time I've actually That's had right. to say that. We'll we do will our say, friends of the Wolfpack. Yep, the we'll friends try to of the sneak Wolfpack. that in here now. Yep, we're getting a little bit too excited to talk to Joe. That's all right, he says. 
we'd like to thank our friends of the Wolf Backup. Because of them, we're able to bring this program to you. Some, some of the sponsors for tonight's broadcast are Lindsay Novacell, Richard Smith, the Debbie Lenaway family, Keith and Linda Regal, Jack and Linda Headland, Jim and Kathy Graville, Corey Dar, Jason and Crystal Wenzel, Julie and John Cleland, John and Christy Dar, Kellen Greno, Allison Miller, Rennie Sacklin, Penny and Wally Barber, Todd Stanko, Woodside Oils of Kane, PA, Rita Graville, Ariana and Jocelyn Graville, Bill and Kim Chiquetti, Ron Cardi, Denny and Perky Galvin, Joan and Thomas Walker, Misty Slater, Kelly Mays. If you'd like to get your name on this list as far as a donor, drop off your $10 donation at the photo and sound shop, or you can also donate via PayPal at wxcyradio.com. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to bring these games to you, the listener. At the end of the first quarter, 22-11, Cutter Sport. There's Mason Rosner, started with 10 points for the quarter for him. He's definitely been the superstar of this game so far. He's drew fouls, he's hit his threes, and he's used his speed, which I personally believe Kevin Sherry sh sets the tone for that because oh, he my. is a very... That's Rosner yep. again. Rosner once again able to increase Cowdy's lead to 11. But as I was saying, Countersport just an all-around fast team. They have very fast athletes that have a ton of stamina. And Wenzel for three, oh, banks bang. it in. Take it to the bank. You can cash in that check. And this one has a lot of zeros before the period. That's a fat check. Thanks to Brock Wenzel, who's able to deposit the three. And it's going to be no good on the three-point opportunity for Countersport. So Kane trying to go on a run. Anderson finds Zook. Zook back to Wenzel. Can he do it again? Not quite. Almost, however. Big rebound. Yep, what a way to be big and lengthy Riley by Riley Strike. Strike. And Brown on the rebound once again. So Countersport 0 for 2 on their last two threes. Got to get the pace under control here a little bit. Yep, we got to play our style of basketball. If we want the game to go fast, it can go fast. If we want it to go slow, it can go slow. But we dictate how we want this game to be played. That's how we want to do it. As Brock Wenzel finds Zook wide open for three. No. Not quite. Anderson gets the rebound, no. puts it up. And Brown almost not quite able to wrestle, wrestle it away. The rebound's going to go to Jerry Titus, number 34, the senior. And Batson is stripped away. away. But Titus is able to get it. We got a timeout on for counter scores. Yep, and good timeout there. You know, they were kind of losing control of the game a little bit, but you didn't want it to become anything widespread. Just keep it to the first minute and a half of this new quarter. Half, a counter sport wants to make sure that they have this game under control. I think Kane's running into, they're getting into the basket, but they forgot the reason they were trying to go to Connor inside without getting, everybody's pushing the basket now. Connor's kind of the forgotten person right now. He's going for rebounds, but they haven't been looking for him to get the offensive in. Right, and as we said, fr from our perspective, we think that a huge key to this game for Countersport, it's be faster than the Wolves consistently, which they've done so far because they've just had fast break after fast break after fast break. And for the Wolves, it's be big, be strong, be tough, and use your players in the post. And huh? when you do that, that opens up the three-point opportunity because everybody's going to be wanting to collapse the post. And we already know with players like Dane Anderson, Kyle Zook, Brock Wenzel, anybody on this team at any given moment, they can step up and sink that three. Cowdy's hitting the boards hard, though, on the rebounding end. They're not giving up a second, second shot there. Which Kane's pounding the boards, but they're just getting beat out just by a tad on the side. Yep, Jim, it seems like in the blink of an eye, they're at the three point line. And they're and moving. Yep, then all of a sudden, they're right underneath the basket grabbing so rebounds. Let's see if we can chip into this lead a little bit. This is the second quarter. We're 6 24 and into the second. 22 to 14 in favor of Cowdersport. Streitner for three. Excuse me, Reisner. And it's no good. Brown with the rebound. And Anderson passes to Dar, Dar to Zook, Zook back to Dar, back to Anderson to complete the cycle. Anderson gives it to Dar, Dar finds Wenzel, Wenzel to Zook, back to Wenzel in the post. Too hard, he's on and the floor, no, no good, yep, on the floor, not enough to draw the foul or get the foul called. And for three, not afraid to take it is number three, Drew Zook, Van Lee. Zook's got that rebound. Anderson. No. For three. There's oh, a you can count that one. That's a grown man three for that's Dane a, Anderson. That's huge for the game, too. Get Dane started. 
And now Cowder Sports leads, cut to five. We got a foul yep, on Striker. Striker dribbles in and gets the foul called. He will go to the line with 5.26 to play, his team up by five. Dane Anderson's second foul. And the gym falls quiet. Swish. No doubt Riley, about Riley it. Riley strike. It's in. Strike the senior trying to make his second. And he does it. Doesn't leave a doubt about it for either of them. And Countersport expands their lead to seven. Let's see what the this Kane Wolves offense, what the Wolf Pack has to say about that. As Dar is in the post, passes it back to Zook. Booted and out of bounds. Man, Zook wanted to pass it to Anderson, but it was number four, Mason Rossiner, who we've been talking about a lot. Either. Yeah, I mean, he tried to steal the pass, but it just hit right off of his leg and out of bounds. So now Dar is going to inbound it to Wenzel. Wenzel to Brown. Brown finds Anderson for three. No good. And the littlest guy. And Rossiner oh, not oh, quite able God. to get the rebound. Brown, Brown rips it away. <laughs> <laughs> it's loose on the ground, controlled by Coyote. Yep, he just ripped it away, and down he went. I mean, he had no chance to stay up on that one as Batson oh. drives in oh. and not quite able to connect. It rolls in and out. A gift for the Wolves. Let's see if we can open up a present. Brown dribbles into the post. Oh, too hard. Ah, no good. good. He's, you had, know, he's had the shots. If you know he nice wants pass. that one back. Nice pass. Yeah, no rim. good. It would have been Van Lee, but he wasn't able to convert the left-handed layup. Yep. On 24, I Kevin think. Sherry. Kevin Sherry gets the foul called as he reaches in on Anderson trying to drive down the court. And in come a series of subs for the Wolves. It's Sam Lundeen, Isaiah Finn Smith. Chamberlain, and Isaiah Smith. And out goes Connor Brown, Brock, Brock Wenzel, and Preston Dar. And Lundin's gonna get the inbound pass with four and a half to play. His team down, 24 to 17. Dane Anderson passes it cross court to Smith. Finds Zook, Zook back to Smith. He's going with Smith it. Up. Smith up, they and they got to travel. They're gonna call a travel <laughs> for a second. You might've thought if you didn't know any better, it'd be an and one opportunity, because it did go in, but it doesn't count. I thought Smith might have those opportunities inside tonight. And, and he's not afraid to get physical no. Oh, no. at no. all. So he's definitely willing to go up in the post and post up. And that one didn't really have much of a chance for Ross, and they're very uncharacteristic of him. As Anderson dribbles to the right, into the post, up and, and short again. no good. Batson on the rebound. Don't foul, stay back, Dane. Yep, and Dane Anderson still contesting Batson. You know he wants that ball. But Batson wants to try to find a shot. Find Stryker who we pivots. We got a walk back. Yep, but he's called on a foul. He is walking. I said Dane gets energized. He don't want that third foul in his half. Nope, you don't want to get into foul no. trouble. The common themes with this Wolves team whenever they've been in games where they could have won or games that honestly they should have won, it's either yep. slow starts and or just costly mistakes yep. due to foul trouble. If we can avoid those two trends, it gives us a much better chance to win. So far, so good on those two fronts. And Zook in the right-hand corner That's of the nice court. Pass. Finds Chamberlain cross-court, fakes the three, goes in, and it's stripped away by number three, Drew Vanwee, except he gets called on the foul. So it'll stay Wolves basketball with 3.24 to play. The score still 24-17 to as Preston Dar checks back in for Kyle Zook. So Dar didn't see the bench for too long. And Anderson for three, just takes it and shoots it. Oh, not quite. And Countersport doing what they do best. It's nice fast break time. Broken up by Finn. Finn Chamberlain underneath. I, th I thought I saw a foul coming there, but he never touched. It's all ball. Nope, all ball. And just a great athletic, high basketball IQ play for Finn Chamberlain. But it will stay Countersport ball. Rossiner, fine. Striker, but he mishandles the ball. Would have had a got, chance for a We got a layup. foul, I think, on Isaiah. Yep, that's going to be against Isaiah Smith. Number 21, as looks like he's coming out. Yep, Connor Brown is going to check in for Smith after that foul. Coach Dar just trying to tell him, stay under control, stay calm. It's all right, we're, we got this. Right, and there's still plenty of basketball to be played, and all we need is a few things to go our way, and just like that, just like that we have the lead. Big as, rebound by Chamberlain. Yep, the three is no good. It was shot by Batson, the senior, but as Jim said, oh. Chamberlain gets the rebound. He got away with a walk. Oh, man, it? yep. 
almost travels. Maybe he even did, but you know what? They didn't say he did, so in my eyes, he didn't. Wenzel from the corner, passes it back to Chamberlain, drives up and in. No good, but Brown able to get the rebound off the ricochet, passes it to Dar. Dar gives it to Chamberlain. Chamberlain looks like he might get trapped, but gets it to Lundin just in time. Dar to Wenzel, Wenzel dribbles in, you know, and oh, no good. Hit. Wolves can't buy a basket. They got a reach foul. Yep, on. it's Stryker with yeah, the rebound. Yeah. And it's, as either, it's either Wenzel or, or Dar. Who they, I think they got Dar in that one, I think. Let's see here. I'm pretty sure they're going to credit it's Preston gone. Dar with that foul as well. But Stryker is fouled on the rebound. So Cattersport now dribbling down the court with their point guard, Micah Batson. Batson to Rossner. Rossner back to Batson. Dribbles to his right. Batson puts it up. And not quite. Would have been a great contested basket. They're going to call it off Connor Brown. He's been very aggressive on, that, on the defensive boards tonight. He has, it, and you love to see it because that, that's his job. Yeah. That's one of his main jobs is to be physical and be aggressive and be confident in who he is, and he does exactly that. Rossner for three. No good. Nothing but air. Brown with the rebound, except Kevin Sherry stays with it and knocks it out of bounds. Just That's a Kevin Sherry basketball type play right there if I've ever was seen one. Was he state champ cross country? He was right up there. Yes, sure he, he was. He makes, he, he makes states for cross country and track routinely every single yeah. year. And it's not even close. He's the best runner I have ever seen with my own two eyes. And I genuinely oh, another, mean that. Another unforced error by the Wolves. Lentz will hit the guy in the second row of the bleachers on that one. If the pass was intended for Lundin, and he almost just the, snagged the a family with that ball. The scoring right down. The energy is still the same. There's another long Dotson one. Dotson for three. No good. Dar, right place, right time. He gets the rebound. And Stryker comes up from behind him. But finally, he backs off. So Dar to Lundin. Lundin guarded by Van Wee. Oh, and another, another, another self-inflicted error. Wenzel was checking into you the basket. Score he was, if you don't take yep. a shot. That's the whole. He was flashing to the basket. Yep. Obviously, Lundin didn't think that he was going to do that. So he ended up accidentally passing it into the bleachers. So Cattersport once again has the ball. Van Wee guarded by Ben Wilson, who checks in. Rossiner fakes the three, dribbles back out, and just going to hand it off to Stryker. Stryker to Van Wee, who fakes the pass back to Stryker. Nice pass. And nice that play. one's up and in for Batson over Dane Anderson. And Cowdersport right now, they are really showing off their speed. Yeah. That has dictated this game through and through and they, as we have less than a minute to play in the second. They haven't made many offensive mistakes either. Nope. I mean, they played a clean game and they played a fast game. They've set the tone. And that's something that Kane needs to start doing. And what Connor better Brown. way to do it than with the Connor Brown layup on that one. Banks it in. The Wolves now down by seven. Keep in mind, there is no oh. shot clock. However, that's not something that Countersport really There's seems to care by about. Brown. Yep, and Brown just rips it out of Van Wee's hands. Now Anderson goes down the court, finds Dar. Dar. Get in there. Off not the quite. Brown, Brown on the rebound. Oh, oh, no. oh, in and out. Great rebound. Cowdy gets the rebound. Rossner. Guarded by the freshman, Preston Dar fakes the three, gives it to Batson. Batson back to Rossner, over to Van Wee. Van Wee, cross court to Stryker. Stryker pump fakes, goes in, no good. Brown, Brown with the rebound. Almost threw it away. And, oh. yep, the shot does not count oh for Countersport. And heading in to the second half, the Kane Wolves are down by a score of 26 to 19. And this time, guys, I'm not joking. We are going to send it back to our great studios at WXCY. Kane Wolves basketball on 101.7 XZY. Supported by our friends of the Wolf Pack and businesses like these. W.E. Swanson Insurance Agency, offering auto, homeowners, and business insurance at 23 Fraley Street in Kane. W.E. Swanson Agency.com. Zook Motors, with new and pre-owned vehicles and a service and parts department. They're online at zookmotors.net. Lindbergh Furniture, Route 219 north of Johnsonburg, and now Lindbergh Sleep Center at 410 Center Street in downtown Johnsonburg. They're a local dealer for brands like Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, and Ashley. More info at lindberghfurniture.biz. 
Dine Excavating. Their services include gravel and limestone, topsoil, and septic tanks. Located on Route 6 west of Kane, their phone number is 814-837-6990. Allegheny Eye Care, providing eye exams and additional coverage for eye and health situations in both of their Kane and Smithport locations. For more information, their phone number is 814-837-7880. Field Street Boots in Kane, a dealer for Carhartt and Timberline clothing as well as winter footwear and sporting goods. They're on Facebook under Field Street Boots. Highlander Energy, an industrial contractor specializing in the power, petrochemical, natural gas processing, pulp and paper industries. HighlanderEnergy.com. Kane Lumber and Fuel True Value Hardware. Building supplies, lighting, winter snow and ice removal products at their location on Hemlock Avenue in Kane. Rich Gas of Kane, providing propane gas services including delivery and installation with automatic refills. Online at richgasinc.com. We thank these sponsors and friends like you for supporting Kane Wolves basketball coverage on 101.7 XZY. We listen all day. This is my music. Always loud and clear. WXZY LP Kane. From Uptown Kane to the world. Listen live on your mobile device at WXZYradio.com or on your Amazon smart speaker. Tell it to play WXZY. Let's start this party. Always connected to Kane. We are 1017 XZY. I'm Ed Rose, and this is Citizen Kane. Each week on this broadcast, I uncover little known facts and forgotten memories from the hilltop. This week's program remembers Kane's neighborhood schools and groceries. The wooden schoolhouses that once dotted Kane's landscape and the numerous corner grocery stores that served the community existed concurrently over a roughly 100 year span. In the days before school buses were in common use, grammar students walked each day to Clay Street, Welsh Street, Central, Erickson, St. Callistus, West Side, James City, Ludlow, and Mount Jewett Schools. The clabbered buildings, such as the schoolhouse at West Side, were drafty and cold in the winter. After World War II, when most families had one car, which the father usually drove to work, being able to walk to and from school was vital. Walking to school was the standard for kids in small town America. Families also depended on having convenient and walkable access to neighborhood grocery stores. In those days, daily trips to the market were often necessary as smaller and less efficient ice boxes limited food storage capacity. The one car per family dynamic also meant the daytime shopping was often accomplished on foot. Regardless of where you lived in the borough limits of Kane, there was a neighborhood market that was less than four or five blocks away. The West Side Market, Maselli's Grocery, South Side Market, Vince Parati's, Austin's, Benini Brothers, and Bloomquist's were but a few. Some local markets endured until the end of the 20th century, although most gave way when the supermarkets like the Quality, A&P, and the Market Basket stayed open into the evening hours when the lady of the home had access to the family car. Customers realized how much easier it was to make one weekly trip to the store instead of going daily. Improved refrigerators and freezers in the home also spelled trouble for the corner grocery. As early as the 1950s, local school administrators knew the cost of maintaining a slew of aging neighborhood school buildings would eventually lead to consolidation and require busing of students. The school district took the first step in September of 1958 when the new junior high school opened in a former section of Southover Park. About 450 7th, 8th, and 9th graders attended, easing the load on the aging neighborhood schools that were formerly K through 8, 
and on the Kane High Building, where ninth graders were formerly enrolled. In 1970, the new Chestnut Street Elementary opened and combined all area grade schools with the exception of Clay Street and Mount Jewett, which were consolidated over time, ending the era of the neighborhood schoolhouse altogether. The sparkling new elementary school was built on the site of the former Kane High School after completion of the new high school on Hemlock Avenue. The 1936 edition of the library and gymnasium were incorporated into the new Chestnut Street building. In 2010, all area students K through eight began attending the newly consolidated facilities at the middle school site. The once indispensable neighborhood schools have gone the way of the dinosaur. Most kids today don't know the feeling of walking to school and even walking home for lunch. The neighborhood grocer too is but a vestige of the past in small town USA. The food we consume today is likely a bit less fresh and our kids might even be a little less fit for not I'm walking ready you those are. few thousand extra steps per day to school. Regardless, I would not trade my memories of growing up in Kane and walking to school and stopping off to buy penny candy on the way home. All right. Well, that's all for this week, friends. Please send your story ideas and suggestions to citizenkanepa at gmail.com. And thank you for listening. When severe weather is headed our way, stay ahead of it with hourly updates from Jet 24. Only on 1017 XZY, WXZY LPK. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back at the Wolves' end. The score being 26 to 19 in favor of Cowdersport. And if there's one thing I could say about this Cowdersport team, is that they are the exact opposite of the Ridgeway team that I commentated on Wednesday. But before we get into the second half, I'd like to go over our seniors and what their plans are and all that they've done for our school and our community since they've got here. So to start with Dane Anderson, he was escorted by his parents, Jeff and Julie Anderson. His school activities include baseball, football, and basketball for four years, as well as being a member of SAD. He was a Care for Kane volunteer and a Little Wolves football camp volunteer. His future plans are to attend Edinburgh University for an undecided major. Now, Jim, let's talk about Connor Brown. Connor Brown, son of Matt Brown of Bradford and Nia Brown of Kane. She was escorted tonight by Nia Brown and James Anderson. Connor's at school activities. He did football this year for one year, basketball for one year, indoor track and outdoor track, three years apiece. Community activities, he volunteered with the SPCA, active at the community center, and he's employed at Bob's Trading Post for the past two years. Connor's plans are to attend Slippery Rock University for an undecided major. And right now his plans are to join the track and field team as a thrower. The third one, can we take it? You got it? I can do that one. All and just right. one last thing about Connor Brown. I see him throw a jab and a shot put and all that. It is quite the sight to see. So no yep. shocker that he's going to Slippery Rock and that he's going to be part of their track team. And our final senior is Sam Lundeen. He was escorted by his parents, Brad and Aaron Lundeen. His school activities include track for four years. He's a very stellar athlete all around, but track, he is special at track and jumping. That is definitely, it's definitely been a pleasure to watch him. I'm excited for his upcoming season for that. You have basketball for four years, football for three years, golf for one year, orchestra for four years, and SAD for three years. His community activities include care for Kane, being a little league empire, being a middle school track team statistician, and being a Special Olympics volunteer. And his future plans are to travel and learn from a mentor to become a trader in the stock market. So thank you so much to all of our seniors. Your presence will truly be missed, but we are very excited for what is to become in all of your lives. We, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. And we are very excited for what is to become of this second we're half. We're underway. Yep, we are underway, and Anderson takes the three right out of the gates, no good. Striker with the rebound, number 30 for Cowdersport, who gives it to Batson, one of, if not the primary ball handlers for this Falcons team. Batson, fine striker. Lundin oversteps him just a little bit. Blocked oh, and it's blocked by Lundin in the post. Striker able to get the rebound. And Cherry drives in and draws the foul. I think they got Brock on that one, but I'm not positive. 
It's either going to go on Wenzel or Brown. We can look at the scores table for that. Well, let's see. It looks like they. That's yep, on Wenzel. They call it on Wenzel, and Kevin Sherry goes to the line to shoot two. First one's up and away. Right in. Nothing but net for Kevin Sherry. His teammates give him a high five. And if you're Cattersport, you hope that gives him the will to make the second. Short. It does not. The announcer's jinx works. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> Dane Anderson dribbles to his right. Oh, strip the right. Yep, strip a right Wentzel, into the hands of Wenzel. Wenzel yeah. rolls in for Brock Wenzel. Good hustle by Wenzel on that play. Yep, great all-around play for the Wolves, capitalized by Brock Wenzel. As Stryker shoots for three, no good, but Sherry on the rebound, no it's ball, stripped, stripped by Anderson. By. And Brown gets it, gives it back to Anderson. Anderson finds Zook in the post. Zook dumps it off to Lundin for three, no good. Rebound, Stryker. Oh, but Anderson rips oh, it away. He, he wanted a call, he didn't get it. Anderson off the rim. No Two good. Oh, we got a foul on Lundin on the rebound. Yep, and Dylan and that's Howard. That's Sam's third foul. Dylan Howard able to get that rebound and the foul. And as like you said, Sam Lundin's third foul. So on a personal note, five fouls means you foul out. So Sam Lundin, 6.30 to play in the third. Yep, probably going to have to hold back a little bit, which I know sucks because that's definitely not something on that he wants night? to do. Yeah. Right. Especially on senior night. Exactly, exactly. And there is Howard, and it's stripped. Into big Connor Brown, took it away from him. Here you go. Doing what he does best. Sam Lundin drives to the hoop. Big hoop, and big hoop. Way to use the rim and the backboard for Lundin as he gets in the left-handed layup to cut the deficit to four. Rossner, no nice good. Nice follow. Yep. Striker follows and he strikes again on the right-handed layup to make it 29 to 23. A little under six minutes to play in favor of Cowdersport. Lundin, excuse and me, Anderson. Anderson way out there. They're fighting for it. who's got the ball. It's going to Cowdersport. I'm gonna guess it's off Connor Brown, but I'm not positive. I definitely would say that one was off of Brown. So Batson gets the inbound pass to Rosner. Rosner found Striker. Striker tries to he's do it again. No nope. strip. They got it back. Got it back and oh, score. Oh, man. Yep, he scores again, even though Brown stripped him. And just like that, Cowdersport back up by eight. 31 to 23. Connor Brown finds Lundin. Lundin tries to drive on Cherry, dumps it back out to Wenzel. Wenzel back to Lundin. Lundin to Anderson in the corner. Not quite. Stryker gets the rebound. It's going to be a jump ball thanks to the contest by Lundin. And it will stay Kane basketball. That's, that striker, he has quite the, the leaping ability in there too. He does. He's, He's definitely had the most rebounds by has. far for Cowboysport. We got a timeout here on the court. Blue time. Nope, no timeout. Just ball's going to Cowboysport here. All right, so the refs didn't get it right the first time, but they talked about it, and now they have it right. Cowboysport basketball with 5.18 to play, up 31 to 23. Rossiner, guarded by Dar. And a foul on Dar. Yep. Preston Dar is going to get called for little, some sort of reach. reach. Team can't let this game get away from them. They're yep. right in it. Already three fouls called against the Wolves. Chamberlain coming in replacing Dar. Quarter. Rossner on the inbound pass. Fine striker, but it rolls off his hands and out of bounds. I think Dane might have got a hand on that one. He did, and he All points. Right, he got a stove finger on the Rossner, right? They caught the ball and slowed him down a second. And Anderson points in the direction of our basket and now has the ball. Gives it to Wenzel. Wenzel finds Chamberlain. Chamberlain to Brown. Brown cross court to Wenzel. Wenzel finds Anderson in the corner, dribbles in towards the post, up and in. Dane Anderson. Doesn't matter the height, it matters the effort. And he proves it every single day. Dane right Anderson gets it. Straight. Yep, but Cowdersport able to pick up that phone and respond easily. It's Strike in there. Strike does not look like an intimidating basketball player, but boy, can he get up and down the court. And Zook finds Anderson on the pass, but stripped away from him. And Batson ends up with the ball. Driving down the court. 
Right through what came defense and no, yep. probably a big rebound. But Brown gets the rebound and puts Countersport in reverse as now Kane pushes down the court. Wenzel finds Dar. Speaking of which, Coach Dar is getting really fired up right now. I think he wants him to shoot the ball a little bit more. And up hey, another turnover. We discussed this at halftime. Oh, there's the throw giveaway by Countersport. Almost. The Countersport has not had the the errors, they play discipline, they under control, and Kane's had a turnover after turnover tonight. You're exactly right. And they need to stop doing that if they want to win this Off game. Off the rim, Brown pulls it down. Yep, Stryker not able to convert. Connor Brown there to convert the ball the other way in favor of Kane. Wenzel, he's double teamed. Another oh, a steal. It's Rossner, Rossner uncontested and in. To I think, make it. I think Kane needed that timeout. They We're did. Down 10. Definitely. So the score is 35 to 25 in favor of the Falcons with 326 to play. And man, this game has been such a fast competitive game. And Jim, looks like you have something here to say. No, we just added a couple additions to the Wolf Pack. We're okay there. We'll get it to the end of the quarter here. I want to say at halftime I got the opportunity to go over and see an, an old fan, an old Kane alumni. Mr. Wick Furman, he used to be manager of the market basket back in the day. I know he's had a couple kids grow up in the Kane School District, and he was very involved with sports here, sports and counter sport. It's good to see him. I said he spent a long time, and I said he's a good friend of my uncle's over in counter sport, but a resident of Kane that a lot of people know. Right, and almost every single time we drive past Save a Lot, especially when I'm with my grandpa, he talks about, oh, that used to be the market basket, yep. the market basket. So I worked with yep. him there. Long time ago. Yep, obviously obviously before my time, but it certainly sounded like a good time. It was. It was. When he spotted me from across the court and was waving to him from the other bleachers, I said, I kind of figured he'd be here. His, his son, I'm not sure he is, but he was a coach on the counter sport bench for quite a while. And you just love to see that community activeness for him yep. and his family. Yep. Definitely a great quality to have as we begin to resume play at the Wolves Then The Wolves down by 10 with 3.24 to play. Wenzel inbounds it to Anderson. Anderson to Wenzel. Wenzel. Oh, one into the crowd. Oh, just too high of a pass intended for Zook, and it, it rolls over to the scorer's table and out of bounds. But, man, Jim, they really have to get this ball control under control. It is. We're giving Cuttersburg too many free opportunities. And right now, that's the difference in this game, and mm -hmm. especially because they're really great at fast breaks, and we are giving them opportunity after opportunity to do what they're best yeah. at. They space the floor. They're looking for somebody to cut. And Stryker gives it to Howard. Howard to Rossner. Rossner puts up the two. No good. Not able to roll in. He's upset about that Dan one. Anderson wants to run, but I'm not sure it's the right call. Not quite. Gets his own rebound, though. Rolls out of bounds off the foot of Dylan Howard, number 21 for Cowdersport. It will stay Wolves basketball. Kyle Zook to inbound. Zook finds Chamberlain. Chamberlain gives it to Dar. Dar starts to dribble. Gives it to Smith. Smith to Chamberlain. Chamberlain is double teamed. And there's Zook. Zook to Smith in the corner. Smith. Cross court pass to Dar. And man, they are guarding the post very well with this zone so far. Oh, it just will not fall. But Dar gets good, his good own work rebound. By Dar. Yep, way to keep keep going at it. You like to see the effort there. Right now, Kane doesn't have any outside shooters on the floor, but Anderson, he's going inside with it. And he gets yep, fouled. Draws the foul. So smart move by Anderson. He will go to the free throw Fouls line. On Dylan Howard. That's his first. 2-11 to play in the third. Still the same score of 35 to 25 in favor of the Cowdersport Falcons. But Dane Anderson has an opportunity to change that, cut that deficit a little bit, and then hopefully Kane can start going on a run. There's one. Yep, sinks the first one. Cuts the deficit to nine. Up and away. Off and no good. Dar gets the rebound. Quip hard. And Dar finds Chamberlain. Chamberlain to Zook. Zook to Anderson for three. Man. No good. Rebound goes to Van Wee. It but it's stripped from him, stolen. And now it's in the hands of Dar. Eight. But now Rossiner intercepts it. It stays in the court. Rolls all the way to Chamberlain. Oh, oh. 
And I it looks like the not, ref is. I'm not sure of that call. Yeah, it looked I mean, like they, Chamberlain let it go through. They picked it up on the end. Of, he picked it up after it went out of bounds. It shouldn't have been. I don't know. Yep, it was very hard to see from our perspective because of where we're sitting and how it's on the other end of the court because we're at court level. We're not anywhere up in the stands. We're at court level. level. So couldn't quite tell what happened on that one, unfortunately, as Countersport not able to convert the layup. But Rossiner again. Well, Kane's, Kane's getting burned on the boards. Yep, not on the three. Cannot convert. No. Nope. It rolls off of Countersport. Countries it will be Kane ball. Right around right now. And Sam Lundin coming in for Kyle Zook. And Talon Schaefer, the freshman, okay. he looks amazing in JV. And he checks in for his first minutes of the game. He played significant time against Ridgeway last week as well. I and like this Kane JV team. Yeah, it's very promising bright. player. They've won six in a row Anderson now. got one. Uh, great job for Anderson on the right-hander. Rossiner guarded by Anderson, puts on a move, loses the ball, but Van Wees able there is able to be there to get it. And now Rossiner, well. not quite, somehow Bank finds in. its way to Stryker. And as you said, Jimmy, banks it in for two. He's dominating right now. He doesn't, he's not a physical presence. Like I said, he just, there's a foul on, that's on Rossiner there. Yep. It's going to go against number four, Rossner. the junior Mason Rossiner. And Dar's going to have the inbound pass with 101 to play. His Wolves down by nine. Finds Isaiah Smith. Smith to Lundin. Lundin drives nice in. Oh, what a beautiful move in the air by Sam Lundin. One of the things he's best at in order to convert and give the Wolves There's two more steal. on the scoreboard. Talon Schaefer with take, the steal. Take it, take it. Schaefer drives in. It. Oh, misses short. the layup. It's going out of bounds off of who? Yep, out of bounds off of Countersport. It will stay no, Kane basketball. Oh, it is Kane ball. Okay. Good steal by Schaefer. It's nice to see him get in the game. Right? Yeah. I mean, he's – any game he's been in, JV or varsity, he's been very effective, and that's what you want in a basketball player. I don't care what your position is. That's what you want. As Smith passes it to Dar. Dar to Schaefer. Schaefer gives it to Anderson for three. Oh. No good. I think Kane pounded the board. Yeah. As they Smith went right over top of somebody. Who? And that's going to be out of bounds. Of Batson. He, he's walking a little slower coming back here. Cattersport, 20 seconds to play, up 37 to 30. Rossiner, guarded by Dane Anderson, gives it to Batson, guarded by the freshman Schaefer. It's picked off by Dar, the other freshman. He's looking. Where do I go with it? Let's see here. Dar passes oh. it back to Lundin. Lundin has a chance, finds Isaiah Smith for three. Oh, not quite. Oh, big. Oh, Schaefer's and, over the top. Schaefer Good almost effort. able to Good get effort. the jump ball. He's up in the air pretty well there. Yep, time has expired in the third quarter and entering the fourth quarter in a crucial game for both teams. Cowdersport is up 37 to 30. 11 11 that quarter. Okay, we're going to turn around and give you the Friends of the Wolf back one more time. End of the third quarter results here. So here we go. Lindsay Novacell, Richard Smith, the Debbie Lenaway family, Keith and Linda Regal, Jack and Linda Headland. Jim and Kathy Graville, Corey Dar, Jason and Crystal Wenzel, Julie and John Cleland, John and Christy Dar, Kellen Greno, Allison Miller, Rennie Sacklin, Penny and Wally Barber, Todd Stanko, Woodside Oils of Cane, Rita Graville, Ariana and Jocelyn Graville, Bill and Kim Chiquetti, Karen and Ron Carty, Denny and Perky Galvin, Joan and Thomas Walker, Misty Slater, and Kelly Mays. We would like to thank our friends of the Wolfpack. To get your name on the list, drop off your $10 donation at the photo and sound shop, or you can also donate via PayPal at wxcyradio.com. Without your support, we wouldn't be able to bring these games to you, the listener. So Kane, Kane finds them down seven points again, still the same deficit as the halftime. So let's see if we can total these up for. We didn't get you the scores at, half, at halftime, so. And Kane has an opportunity I don't want to quite say that this is the season, but they need to win three of their last four if they want a chance. If they go four for four and finish with a 500 record of 11 and 11, they probably will make the playoffs with that. What a way for Sam Lundin. Sinks to three, what a way to start the quarter. 
Deficits cut the four. Stryker drives in the basket. Lundin on the rebound. He's he has his takeover activated. Sam Lundin puts it up. No good, but the rebound's going to go to Rossiner. Fast break opportunity. Rolls out of bounds. Nobody touches it. Easy call for the refs. It's Kane Wolves basketball with 7.33 to play. Down by four. What a way to start the quarter for the Wolves on the back of Sam Lundin trying to make this senior night special. Maybe he heard what I was saying about the season because the I inbound pass, he was sitting right in front of us. But you know what? I think he had enough motivation on his I own. I think so, too. And Anderson <coughs> finds Lundin in the corner for three. No Off good. Not quite. Had a good chance, but oh, just that, a little bit too much. Dane's third foul. So Anderson with three, Lundin with three, for those of you keeping track at home. Aside from that, nobody else is in moderate to severe foul trouble for either team. I would categorize Anderson and Lundin's as moderate at the moment. But anyways, back to the game. Batson gives it to Stryker, who's guarded by Lundin. Batson now with the ball, guarded by Kyle Zook. Gives it to Van Wee. Van Wee back to Batson. Batson finds Howard in the post. Steal. Oh, almost oh not a... quite. Stryker. Tries to post up on Lundin, not quite. Lundin. Yep, Lundin with the block. Anderson trying to go coast to coast. Too not high off quite. the rim. Batson. Don't reach. Gets the rebound and dribbles down the court. Still guarded by Zook. Dribbles to his left, up and in. Loses control of the ball. That's one thing that Kane's been great at. It's poking that ball loose, Jim. They got a foul on Z on Kyle Zook on that one. Not sure I saw a foul, but it's definitely off of Zook. Batson inbounds it to Van Wee, guarded by Anderson. Van Wee finds Stryker for three. No good. Brown with the rebound. Okay, let's cut into that lead right now. Anderson with a chance to do just that. Finds Wenzel. Wenzel dumps it into Brown. Oh. It rolls in. The lead for County is now only two, and they can start feeling the pressure coming on. They're on the road. They're 9-9, nine and nine, and Kane needs this win. We're hungry like the Wolf. We want to see the Wolves come out on top. Let's do this thing, ladies and gentlemen. We have over six minutes to play, just a little bit. Now we're under they six. A foul on Zook. Yep, so a foul on Zook, and with 5.59 to play, Cowdersport up 37-35. Batson is going to... Have the inbound pass. It's not going to be called a shooting foul. Two-point lead for the Falcons. Oh, and it's tipped by Zook. Very nice play Ooh. by Kyle Zook. Almost. But it will roll off the hands of Anderson, so it'll stay County basketball. Cowdersport finds Van Lee. Van Lee oh. overshoots it. Took it from Lindy. But, but Howard, foul. yep, Howard takes it from Sam. We got a foul on Sam. Sam, I know it's like, a I don't know about the call, but they, they called it. Fourth foul on Lundin. Coach Dar, not the happiest man in the world with that call. Four team fouls on Kane in the quarter already. Now this could be. And that puts Sam Lundin up to four individual fouls. Yep, stolen. It falls into the hands of Lundin. Lundin drives towards He's the basket, nice finds to Wetzel. Wetzel. Oh, Way to go! It's a 7-0 run in favor of the Wolves to tie up the game with 5.40 to play. 37-37, and this is the fourth quarter we've wanted so walk. far. Yep, Thank you. he's walking. I don't know where he's traveling, but he should stay right here in Kane and try to win this game. Instead, he might be taking a trip to Cancun. This reminds you of the Sheffield game. Kane's intensity yep. is there this quarter. I commentated that game. If you yep. guys remember that, if you guys listened or watched, thank you so much for doing that, as always. This game feels really similar to the way yep. that game felt, and that's a good feeling because Kane ended oh, up winning that steal. one. Yep, picked off by Van Wee. Van Wee up. Look, no good. Got a foul on Zook, and yep. that is his third. But a foul Shooting on Connor foul, Zook. So be two. Zook with three fouls, Anderson with three, and Lundin with four, according to our stats. Unofficially. Yeah, unofficially, of course. But we like to think we're pretty good at counting, as Van Wee sinks the first one to reclaim the Cottersport lead. And in comes Rossiner, number four, and out comes Kevin Sherry, number 24. And the second one, no doubt about it, for Drew Vonley. And Anderson, his team down by two, but they have the momentum for the most part. Wenzel for three. Oh, not quite. It looks like it was going in. 
and Rossiner finds Howard. Howard to Stryker. Stryker puts it up and in. And now that momentum's starting to slip away. Kane has to do something to get it back. Anderson, double covered, gives it to Dar. Dar tries to work his way into the post on Howard. He wait. finds Brown, and it's in! Connor Brown, wait a second, guys. Countersport's not going to be able to keep doing this because we have something to say about it. However, they're still up by two, so there's more work to be done. We still have four and a half minutes to play. Oh, Zook, uh, stolen, not oh, quite. Good effort by yep, Zook. Good effort, good play, but just not able to convert the ball. It rolls out of bounds close to our table. It'll stay a Countersport ball. It's going to be Micah Batson with the inbound pass. And he gets it to Rossner. Rossner to Van Wee. Van Wee. Into bat, no, no, not into bats. It looked like he was going to pass to him, but he didn't. Drives into the post. No good. Connor Brown's had the quick hands tonight. He's he like, has. And, and it's great to yeah, see because. They think they're going to drive, but for a big guy, he's moving quite well. Yep, and it looks like number three, Drew Van. We didn't want any of that because Brown got him to go out of bounds. It'll be Kane basketball. Score sheet's getting sloppy on here. So okay. Yep, it's winning time, and it's also shoe-tying time. Riley Strike and Ressner lead Countersport with 14 there apiece. Kane's led by Dane Anderson and Sam Lundin with 11 each. So nice way to spread the ball around for the Wolves as play resumes. Finn Chamberlain with the ball, gives it to Dar. Dar stops the dribble, finds Anderson, dumps it into the post for Brown. Brown finds Chamberlain. Chamberlain almost stripped, able to regain foul possession. On number four, Ressner. Yep. That's his third. His third foul. So some players starting to get into the territory where they could be into some foul trouble. I like seeing Finn Chamberlain drive. He does that quite well. He's real hesitant tonight, it seems like. Right, I, I would agree with you on that. And there's Dar. You know, just something that he'll fix with yeah, this oh, game, oh, obviously. For sure. you know, very, very easily. It's an easy fix, so nothing bad. As Anderson tries to Won't fix the go. scoreboard with the three, but not oh, quite. Con Brown, Brown, got it. look at Brown go! Connor Brown goes up with his left, puts it in with his right, and ties up this game. Timeout, counters for it at the game. 41-41 at the 3:43 mark. Here we go. Good ball game. Man, you've got to be loving Kane Wolves basketball this week. I know that a couple of their games this week didn't go the way we wanted, but when it comes down to the close games, there's nothing better than what we've been getting. The Sheffield game, now this game. For sure. These games have been special, Jim. For sure. And it's been great as the student section saying, here we go, Kane Wolves, here we go. If you're not driving your car right now, feel free to clap and stomp your feet. Get in on this cheering action. As we have 30 seconds left in this timeout, Jim, what's something that you want to see in this last four or so minutes well, I, of play? I think right now, minutes? Kane shooting outside, but Connor Brown's come to life underneath. He is. I mean, it's attacking the boards. If they're if they're driving on him, he's been interrupting a lot of stuff. So it's like he's going, and Kane's going to have to find a couple good looks from the outside, I think, to get things over. We've got a lot of drivers on there right now. But Sam has four fouls. He's got to be careful. Right. And, and if you're counter sport, what do you do? Because if you commit to the post and try to stop a player like Connor Brown, you run the increased risk of having a three-pointer wide open to a player like a Dane Anderson, yeah, or Sam Lundin, or Kyle Zook. The wrestler, Mason, has carried them right now. It's his aggressiveness. But I think Connor's kind of narrowed, zeroed in on him a little bit and shutting him down on the outside. Definitely got him two to one weight-wise. As play resumes with 3.35 to play, it's tied up 41 to 41. It doesn't get any better than this, ladies and gentlemen, as it's almost picked off by Brown, but Anderson's able Slow to get down. it. Slow Dribbles down. down the court, guarded by Batson. Kane, Anderson gives it to Dar. I don't think Kane has led in this game. Dar gives it to Lundin. Lundin up oh. and good! Kane has taken the lead with 3.11 to play, up 40. Three to 41, but Rossner for three. That's not something you want to see, oh, but he Anderson doesn't make it. it away from him. Anderson gets the easy, steal, easy, drives easy. down. The turn. What are they calling? They got the a turn, charge. I thought so. A charge yep. on Dane Anderson. That's going to be That's his, his fourth. fourth individual foul. Sam has four. And, and, yep. and, and, and that Zook puts has three. Doubles, double bonus. Here we go again. No, that offensive foul. No, no foul shots on that one. 
But from now on, any defensive foul committed by the Wolves will be free throws for Cowdersport. No questions asked. Meanwhile, Cowdersport only has one team foul this fourth quarter. Thank as you. Lundin. Yep. <laughs> there you go. As the ball rolls over in the Jim Coppersmith's hands, but he gets it into the hands of Sam Lundin on the inbound pass. This is senior night. You can tell them Sam and Dane want this game. They absolutely do, and right now, they're doing it. Dar for three, not quite. And Stryker gets the rebound. Everybody is very tense in this gym right now. This is the atmosphere you love as a fan. Stryker oh. for three, he strikes again and puts Countersport up by one, 44 to 43 with 2.20 to play. Dar trying to lead his team to a response. Anderson finds Brown oh, in the post. Put it up. Back to Lundin. Lundin. No call. Could have been fouled on the way up. No Over call. Over the bat. That's tip. Yep. That's tip. It goes on the top of the backboard oh. and it's going to be called out Isn't of bounds. Is that a tip ball? Well, it went on the top of the backboard, okay. so that's considered out of bounds. So that's Very. why that tip did not matter even when it descended. So Countersport ball. Stryker drives in on Brown. Stryker goes up and it rolls oh, in and my. out, gets his own rebound, and that's a foul. He's tough. It's, he's and Stryker's going to go to the foul line. And on senior night, you know they want it so that, badly, who's Jim. That, who's that called? 33. You know they want it so badly, and it's in reach. It but now they have to wait for the Stryker free throws. He makes the first one. And, man. He's got 18 on the night. Riley Stryker gets the second one. Cowder's poured up by three, 46 to 43. 155 to play in the Wolves' den. Dane Anderson with the ball, gives it to Dar. Dar gives it to Lundin for three, not quite. Brown on the oh. rebound, not able to oh, get man. it. And it's we gonna be foul. Dylan we, oh, we got We got an offensive. Yep, it's an offensive Kyle foul. Kyle Zook was harassing him. He came back with an elbow to the side of the head. Offensive foul on Dylan Howard. Howard yep, and the countersport coach is not very happy about that. Well, that was, I mean, Zook drew that foul. He did draw. He was foul. all over him trying to get strip yep. him. Didn't I don't think he fouled him. Yep, he but he it. took a shot to the yep. side. That's hey. that was a frustration foul there. That was a Kane's ball. Kane up three. Or Kane down three. Excuse me. Wenzel. Gives it to Dar on the inbound pass. Fakes the three, dribbles in, finds Anderson. Anderson dribbles oh. into the post, loses the ball. Able to maintain possession and away. not quite. Would have been a great play Look by Anderson. They're trying to hold it together. The frustration is just like setting in. 133 to play. Still 46 to 43 in favor of Cottersport. It's going to be number three, Drew Van Wee, checking in to the game for the Falcons. I think a lot of the Northern Tier games are like this, real oh, for intensely sure. one score from what, games. From what I've seen, yeah. yep. As Rossiner dribbles into the basket. Blocked, Blocked by, by Lundin! Sam Lundin is not afraid to be mean. It's Kane basketball, Anderson. Oh. Lundin keeps it in oh. bounds. Dar almost has oh it, now goodness. Anderson has it, but they What's the call? call a timeout. It looks like Coach Dar calls a timeout. What an effort by Preston Dar on Man. that save. Man, that ball Lundin is going. Lundin went out of bounds, drilled it back down the sidelines. Lundin, or Dart dove for it, somehow kept it in bounds. Wow. It's going all over the place. Wow. I mean, you can't, you, it's hard to keep track of this ball. I mean, it's it's going everywhere this right has now. It's been a entertaining game. A little sloppy at times. I said, wow. And these are the types of games where if you get the win and you have three games it's left crucial. on your schedule and yeah. know that you need to win at least two of three, two of those three games, probably all three, yeah. just for a safety net. But maybe you can afford yeah. to lose one. But we don't have a losing mentality, so let's lo let's we're, win we're all four of them. We're hopeful, right? So this type of win is what sets the tone for the rest of yeah. those games. Then you have an away game at Brockway. You win that game, then you're two and zero in your last two games, obviously, because that's how math yeah. works. Then you have an away game at Johnsonburg and a home game at Cranberry area, and that game right there could yeah. determine whether or not we make the postseason. And Very if you go so. into the postseason hot, you're a dangerous team, right? We Who can knows? dance if we want to. We can Who go knows? to this dance. We can dance the night away. You can't you can't knock the effort this fourth quarter by the Wolves. They're, they're trying their darndest. It hasn't, ball hasn't fallen their way too often, but 
They're working as hard as they can. But we can. have a chance to do it. Lundin for three, oh, no good. Really gotta fight. And it's going to be out of bounds on Powdersport. Wolves ball, and everybody's getting into this game right now. One, Man, what a blessing it is one to do this. 101 left in the game. He needs a basket right Dar now. on the inbound pass. Timeout is going to be called by, it looks like, Coach Dar and the Wolves. Okay. A lot to talk over, I'm sure. I mean, wh what strategy, how do you attack this game, Jim? If, if you're the coach, what are you telling your team? I think he still needs that inside basket to get one. I wouldn't. The threes have been avoiding them tonight. They're not hitting those at all. The inside game, we, we've missed so many bunnies inside. Like the effort's there, the ball just will not go. But, I mean, Sam Lundin and Dane are working their butts off. The C3 seniors right now are just fighting mm -hmm. hard. And, and you want it so bad yeah. for them. They want it so bad. You want it for everybody, yeah. but especially the seniors tonight. You can't knock Cowder can Sports effort. Cowder Sports playing well. Right, and especially the first half, they really set the yeah. tone of this game. However they wanted to play was how the game was going to be yeah. played. There were no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Second half, though, Kane's been able to resist that a little bit, push back a little bit. Let's see if they can have an epic senior night win as Brown oh, inbounds geez. it to Lundin. Lundin to Dar. Dar in. dribbles take, in. Oh, take it in. Back out to Anderson. Anderson. Dar again. Get, get Dar it. for three. Not quite. Brown, way up. Brown on the rebound. Got it. Got it. Still a one point game in favor of Cowdersport. Rossiner. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, there is no shot clock, so Cowdersport does not have to shoot this ball. Kane's going to have to make him do it as Batson finds Rossiner. Guarded by Lundin. And timeout. timeout called by the Falcons. 29.1 to play, and we have a thriller. 46-45, Cowdersport, they have the ball. Kane's in the, Kane has five team fouls, so the foul line favors the Falcons. But you can't knock the Wolves' effort. They're all out, all out. Absolutely, and we're talking about fouls. Anytime that Kane commits a defensive foul, Cowdersport will automatically go to the two, line two because shots. Kane already has five yeah. team fouls in this quarter. So Cowdy has two fouls to give, so if Kane gets close to the basket, Just foul they him. can foul right. without shooting, they can get away with a foul. So. so two different standpoints to look at this game from, depending on what part of the sideline you're on. Very crucial game for both teams. Kane, seven and 11, Cowdersport, nine and nine. Senior night at the Wolves Den. No better way to win it. Where would you rather be? Last with the, <laughs> right, right here, right really, now. Where would you rather be, Jim? And right here, I mean, right now. This is the life. This is what we're here for. This is why. This is why we love sports. This is why That's we love it. our community. And let's get this done. Let's get this done, ladies and gentlemen. Let's show them what it means to play Kane Wolves let's basketball. See what happens here. 29.1 to play. Cowdersport up 46 to 45. It's going to be Stryker guarded by Brown on the inbound pass. Stryker finds Reisner. Reisner to Stryker. And a foul will be called. And Stryker. Stryker back to the line. Stryker's going to go to the free throw line. If he makes both of them, Cowdersport will be up by eight. Okay, right now they're, Connor I mean, excuse Brown me, three. Second. They'll be up by three. They'll have 48 points. That's where the eight came from. But currently they're up by one. Makes the first, 47-45. Kevin Sherry checks in for Drew Van. 20 points for Riley Stryker. The fans are making some noise, trying to be respectful about it. It's, uh, oh, it's it rolls in. in. So Anderson takes it down the court, down by three, 48 to 45. What's the call, timeout? Again, another timeout is going to be called. It's by the Wolves again? Uh, the scores table suggests it's by Cowdersport. Okay. So. So that's where they talk. We have two fouls to give right here. That's what they're talking. Yep, and all these timeouts, they always happen in a tight game like this. I'm it gives you more time to be anxious, huh? to anticipate what could come. And Kane, down 48 to 45, where else would you rather be? Whether you're in this gym, whether you're in your car, whether you're in the kitchen listening to on the radio, or if you're in front of your TV, your phone, your tablet, your iPad, listening to us at WXEY, we thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. And this is why we do this for you. We do this for you because we know that the community loves this. The community wants this. wants this. We love it. We're glad we can bring it to yep, you. Yep, we're so happy to bring it to you guys. And don't worry. We're as antsy as you guys are right now. 
as we have 15 seconds left in this timeout. The Wolves down 48 to 45 with about a little over 21 seconds to play. They have the basketball. It's senior night. And in a moment like this, you're probably looking to Dane Anderson, Connor Brown, or Sam Lundin. I, Lundeen, the I three still don't seniors. think you need a three. You need a basket. You don't. You, you don't need, need, a, need a three. You need a basket. Basket of foul would be real nice. That would be spectacular. Dar gets the inbound pass from Wenzel. Dar finds Anderson. Anderson. To Dar for three. The no. Rim. Oh, there's a foul. Oh, it's going to be Dylan Howard on the rebound and a foul, and he's going to the line. It's on Connor Brown, the foul. 11.3 to play. Counters poured up 48 to 45. We'll see if Dylan Howard can sink the potential dagger into the heart of this Wolves team. First one's up. First one's no Off good, no good. And he can feel the pressure. He knows that his team could really use this free throw right now. And will he respond? Yes, he will. A clutch play for Dylan Howard as Anderson shoots the three. Way off a little bit too oh, hard. Sherry Wenzel. with I, the rebound. Wenzel forced a foul. I think your ball game just ended right there. And Cowdersport up 49 to 45 with 3.2 to play. I've seen crazy things if Kane wins this one. It will arguably be the craziest. That's a dejected Wolves team walking down the line. Though. And you can just look into the yeah, eyes. They, they, they tried so hard and worked so hard tonight. They did, and you just gotta wonder if those first, if that first half didn't happen, and yep. Sherry sinks the first. If that first half didn't happen, and they didn't allow Cowdersport to basically dominate how the game's being played, fast, 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 constantly. I really think you could see a different result tonight, as long as something crazy doesn't happen here. Sherry makes both of them, 51 to 45. Wenzel's just gonna lob one up. It'll be Anderson now. He makes it for and good measure. And now it goes in. Yep. So the final score will be 51 to 48. Unfortunately, it is in favor of the Cowdersport Falcons. They advance to 10 and 9, and your Wolves drop to 7 and 12, and they must win these last three games if they want even a chance of sniffing the playoffs. And with that, we will go back to our studios at WXUI. Basketball on 1017 XZY, supported by our friends of the Wolfpack and businesses like these. Allegheny Eye Care, providing eye exams and additional coverage for eye and health situations in both of their Kane and Smithport locations. For more information, their phone number is 814 837 7880. Field Street Boots in Kane, a dealer for Carhartt and Timberline clothing, as well as winter footwear and sporting goods. They're on Facebook under Field Street Boots. Highlander Energy, an industrial contractor specializing in the power, petrochemical, natural gas processing, pulp and paper industries. HighlanderEnergy.com. Kane Lumber and Fuel True Value Hardware. Building supplies, lighting, winter snow and ice removal products at their location on Hemlock Avenue in Kane. Rich Gas of Kane, providing propane gas services, including delivery and installation with automatic refills. Online at richgasinc.com. W.E. Swanson Insurance Agency, offering auto, homeowners, and business insurance at 23 Fraley Street in Kane. W.E. Swanson Agency.com. Zook Motors, with new and pre-owned vehicles and a service and parts department. They're online at zookmotors.net. Lindbergh Furniture, Route 219 north of Johnsonburg, and now Lindbergh Sleep Center at 410 Center Street in downtown Johnsonburg. They're a local dealer for brands like Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, and Ashley. More info at lindberghfurniture.biz. Dine Excavating. Their services include gravel and limestone, topsoil, and septic tanks. Located on Route 6 west of Kane, their phone number is 814-837-6990. We thank these sponsors and friends like you for supporting Kane Wolves basketball coverage on 1017 XZY. Hello and welcome back to the Wolves Den here in beautiful Kane, Pennsylvania. We didn't get the result we were looking for tonight, Jim. Final score, 
51 to 48 in favor of the Cowdersport Falcons. Cowdersport advances to 10 and 9, and Kane drops to 7 and 12, which is brutal for their playoff chances if they want to even sniff the playoffs like Correct. I said at the beginning of the game they need to win out so let's talk about this scenario their next game is next Wednesday February 7th they have an away game against Brockway historically that's a cane win Correct. then Johnsonburg Johnsonburg is having a very good season it's tough to play down there too. yep it's an away game that's just what I was going to say and then finally their last game and if they were to win the Brockway game and Johnsburg game, this game will be huge. A home game against Cranberry area, as is tradition. If Kane wins out, they go 10 and 12. Last year, they made the postseason. They were one game below 500. But 10 and 12. They were 10 and 12 last year. So same scenario. Okay, but, but the effort was there tonight. It was. The seniors wanted it so bad. It, but you got to give Cowdersport credit. They played a heck of a game. You can. And... Just to get jump back into that Kane record scenario for a second, and then we'll get analysis about the actual game. When you take a look at their schedule, they started off six and four, which was fantastic. The vibes were very high, but then they had the holiday tournament loss to Sheffield. Yeah. They followed it up with an 18 point win in an away game against Sheffield, but this is the stretch of the season. That was absolutely brutal. Ridgeway loss, Bradford loss, ECC loss, DCC loss, Port Allegheny loss. Then they played, yeah. in my opinion, the best game of the season at yeah. home against Sheffield in the Thriller, and they won. Back in the winning column. Then this Monday, they go to Eisenhower, lose by 34. Eisenhower's good. They, they are very good. good. They're a lot better than they have been in yeah. previous years. And then their past two games, a 22-40 to 40 loss to Ridgeway, and they played a team in Cowdersport that was the complete opposite of Ridgeway, yeah. in my opinion, and they were fell just short 51-48. to 48. And that is what Coach Dar is going to have to sit and look at yeah. the rest of the season if this team doesn't make the postseason. That stretch of games right there, yeah. that is painful, especially when you know a lot of those games, slow starts or mental lapses in the middle or foul trouble can easily be credited to a lot of those losses because yeah. a lot of those games were relatively close. So that, that, that is absolutely brutal. Meanwhile, Cowdersport advances. They have an away game against Galeton on February 6th. That's their next game. So both teams fighting for a playoff I think spot. That as, the Al or as the Alcorn League goes, the top two teams go to a tournament at the end, north and south. Northern Tier this year has gone to a four-team bracket also. But it's virtually four will play one, three will play two. It's the first time they haven't just – they've had an actual tournament at the end to see where it goes. But I think it's going to be in that. It's going to be Otto and Cameron County coming out of there. Otto will be in our – bracket division bracket Cameron County would be in the A bracket and Otto Eldred especially is on a tear I yep. believe they're 18 and they've one. Lost one game yep, and they've only lost one CL yeah they've only lost one game and so congratulations to them yep. they're having a heck of a season let's get into the analysis of this game Jim if you want to talk about in our opinion what the Wolves had to do it was they had to use the post use their big men down low so use Connor Brown maybe dump Sam Lundin into the post a little bit more than you do usually and use your size because Cowdersport had tall players but they were all tall and lengthy for the yeah. most part meanwhile Kane had a little bit more players that had a little bit more muscle to them so they could have used that width advantage that size advantage to their favor and they did a lot at times they, but had, they had the looks they couldn't get the ball to fall in the basket early on right and in, in a game where three points is the deciding factor yeah. That, that right there determines the I game I think overall. there's a lot of unforced turnovers by the Wolves tonight. They Absolutely. Just, it, it's, it's, they were playing hard, trying to go, but it's just like it just was not their night to, to come finish it off. And it does seem like, because going off what you're saying about the turnovers, this, the first half, Cowdersport set the tone in the game. I've said this many times throughout this broadcast. If Cowdersport wanted to go fast, the yep. entire first half, fast break after yep. fast break after fast break, they could do exactly that. If they wanted to slow it down for some reason, they could. They dictated the terms Very of this game. So. Second half, you saw Kane resist a lot more. They made a great effort, a great pushback, and they were able to have their say in how this game plays out. So you could say, oh, Kane's a second-half team, and that's, that's great. Pretty but much, yeah. Coach Dar wants this team to be a full-game team, yeah. quarters one through four in overtime if needed, which I potentially think, could have been the case. Yeah, I think they were ready to play tonight. They, oh, they I were. Mean, they were up. They were in tune. It just, you know, things went one way, things went another. It's just, it's a tough game. Cowdy played well. So we do the numbers real quick, see what we got. For Cowdy, Riley Strike 
I mean, he seemed to me, him and the, the Ressner guy pretty much dominated. Yep, they had I their think way. I Ressner in the first, well, strike was the whole game, but he ended up with 21 points. Mason Ressner had 14, uh, 7 for Drew Van Wy, 5 for Kevin Sherry, 2 for Dylan Howard, 2 for Micah Batson for a total of 51. For the Wolves, they were led by Danny Anderson with 14, Sam Lundin 13, Connor Brown 10. There's your three seniors. 7 for Brock Wenzel, and 2 each for Preston Dar and Finn Chamberlain. Said so the effort was good. You felt bad for the seniors because they, they wanted it so bad and they, and they worked so hard for it. Right, and especially that fourth quarter, primarily all the big plays that were able to cut a 37-30 to 30 deficit going into the fourth to tie it up to, at many points in time, Kane actually having the lead, was on the back yep. of their seniors. And yep. that, that's special right there. So the seniors and the rest of this team, they have a chance still. They have a chance. Yep. Um, it's They may have to rely <laughs> on other teams, which is never where oh, you yeah. want to be, but they have They've a chance. To, they have to win out. Th yeah, they have to win out. There's no doubt about it. So stay tuned in. Cowdersport, just such a fast team. I mean, they were just constantly up and down the court. So you got to congratulate them for this win. And, of course, they just seem very conditioned and very they're much, very determined. Very much more impressed with the northern tier from what I've seen. I've seen Cameron County play. Otto beat Cameron County. The port, the port the last game, Port looked pretty impressive to me. The first game, Kane beat him. This time, Port was ready to play. Cowdy's just behind Port in the standing, and Powdy, Port, Cowdy has a very nice team to go with it. So the upper upper echelon of the northern tier is pretty strong this year, in my opinion. They do, Jim, and it'll be interesting to see how everything plays out. We're certainly excited, and we'll keep you updated. We'll keep you covered here at WXEY. And for any of, you, of those wondering, our radio network is, of course, a Kane thing, but it's not just a Kane. One of the friends of the Wolf Pack, Kelly Mays, that's actually my oh. aunt. She lives in the state of Colorado. Okay. There could be people in Beijing. There could be people in London who are turning into Kane Wolves basketball. Ultimately, no matter who you are, where you're from, who you're rooting for, yep. if you're with us at WXEY, whether you donate, whether you listen, whether you watch, if you watch every game, listen to every game, or only can a few periodically, yep. we appreciate your support so much. It wasn't the result we wanted tonight, yeah. but this is always such a fun experience. We're so, so incredibly blessed. Thank you to everybody so, so much from the bottom of our hearts. We love doing this. We love you. We love Kane. And we we'll would be, really love. We'll be back. We'll be back. And we would really love if Kane can win out and have a decent chance at slipping their way into the postseason yeah, on a three-game winning streak. I think the next broadcast is a girls game, I think, with Brockway. It might be senior rec night for, I think it's next Wednesday. And myself and Rick Fisher, along with Chris Nicholas, will be doing that game. So look forward to doing that for you. Yep, and hopefully that senior rec night can end with a W for the Lady Wolves. So, But with that, unless if, Jim, do you have anything else you'd like to add I'm to that? I'm good. It was an enjoyable game. Enjoyed, Very enjoyable. Enjoyed doing this one with you. Hey, me and too, we'll, sir. we'll go on from there. The old guy and the young guy, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. All yeah, righty, well. nice blend of things. But with that, thank you all so much for listening and watching. This is truly one of the honors of our lifetimes is to do this for you guys, and we're not just saying that just to say it. Thank you guys so much. The JV team was able to pick up a 55-21 to 21 win today. The future looks bright. It does. Okay. It does. So congratulations to them. But unfortunately, in a thriller of the game, the Wolves dropped to 7-12 and 12 with a 51-48 to 48 loss to the Cowdersport Falcons. We, I'm Braden Byam. Jim Coppersmith. We thank Joe back at the stage and John here helping us. And Yep, thank I you guess all so much. I for tonight we should just say good night and drive safely getting home. Yep, and go Wolves.